God says, for you, my chosen, even though y'all are extremely rebellious, I'm going I'm to I'm make another way for y'all. Right. If this time you actually listen to me, right. you can't do like you did before. I gave y'all my laws, statutes, and commandments, and y'all said, F you, God. Right. All of you. All of us are worthy of death. But the fact that we all breathing Take is up. the mercy of the Lord. Y'all really don't understand. Bring it up. He can hit a snap of a finger, we all gone. Right. So the least we can do is wake up and repent. The second go around. Three. Before the decree bring forth, uh -huh. before the day pass as the tape, before the fierce anger of the Lord. Before the what? The fierce anger of the Lord. They're not teaching us in Christianity. The fierce anger of the Lord. The Lord is extremely upset with us. He is so mad every time he sees a brother shaving his beard. Because that's a law in the Bible. Teacher. You are not to bald your head. You are not to shave your beard as a man. But th that's what the black man is doing today. Because that's what he's been taught here in his captivity. He is extremely upset with his daughters dressing like men. Right? He wants our daughters to, to dress like royalty. What does that look like for our sisters? Modest dresses. Give me that, Titus. I'm uh, Timothy, too. That looks like a modest dress, my sister. Everybody you know, I know I'm probably the majority, if not all, of women you know probably does not wear uh, dresses, right? They, they, we don't, our sisters, they don't wear dresses, right? Uh, you've been conditioned to think that that's okay according to God. But guess what? God don't change. Right. The, the same standard he, he set from the beginning is the same one he's going to end with. He's already perfect. What's the point of him changing? So his way is always going to be a thing. It don't matter. We Oh, we living in a modern day age, right? This is 2023, right? 2023, right? <laughs> I'll be forgetting sometime, right? We, we're in modern day times, right? So our, our minds is thinking, oh, well, this is new time. Everything's all good now. We can wear pants. We free. We're at liberty to sin. But that's so far from the truth. Just imagine the father in this guy, he got the, his hand on that button. He got his finger on that button just waiting. But he has patience because he's still dealing with his children. He don't want to kill nobody. He don't want to do away with any of us, but he will if you force his hand. Right. Let's see how our sisters should be dressing according to God. Ray. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Uh -huh. And like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So this is what the Bible says. What's up, my, my, my brother? Uh, what's your name? Brother Devin. All right, so we're going over the so-called blacks and Hispanics. We are God's chosen people. Right now, we're going over apparel for the woman. All right? Because we are different. We are separate. Right? We are holy from the other nations. We're not taught that. So right now, we're going over dress code for both the man and the woman. Right now, the Bible says, what about our sisters dressing? Read. And like men are also... That women adorn themselves in modest apparel. All right, so every time a, a woman puts on a dress, is she modest? Is he? It, it don't matter what form of pants. Are are you really modest? Y'all are shaped different from us. So when y'all put those pants on, there's something a little bit more revealing. Your curves. God, He created you to be different from the man. Right? A man, you know, we don't have, you know, the, the, the breast. We don't have those specific curves in the back. So God says, the woman, you are to, to dress modestly. And every time you put on pants, you're, you're revealing yourself. The Lord knows what he's talking about. So he says, the woman shall wear, uh, shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man. You're not supposed to have pants on, my sister. You are supposed to, every single day, wear a modest uh, uh, fitting dress. Every single day, you walk out the house, right? Every single day. But our sisters, they don't do that as a whole. And they wonder why they end up in like certain relationships. Not every time, 
Some of them get married, but most of them don't. Most of them, they, they put on those tight revealing clothing and they, they attract a certain type of man. A man that's not thinking about marriage the majority of the time, right? And then they get with that man, they, they lay down with him. And then where's that man after that act? He gone. The only thing you, you see from that man is his smoke. Because he was out of there quick. Oh, I got what I wanted. I'm gone. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't make me work for it. Yeah, exactly. I saw them pants. I saw them tight clothes. I, I, I knew what you wanted. I gave it to you and you gave it back to me. Yep. And now I'm gone. Exchange done. I appreciate you. Have a nice life. And it's not supposed to be like that. Bring it out. Marriage rates are declining, especially in the black communities. Hey. Especially. Why? Because we don't apply God's commandments. Easy ones like that. Woman, you wear dresses, modest fitting clothing. You a man, wear pants. Don't dress effeminately. Right? You a man, you masculine. You a protector, you a leader. That's who God created you to be as a man. Right? A woman, she's supposed to dwell in her feminine energy. She does that with a with a, a dress on, with a skirt on. With them heels on, them nails did, her hair did, all of that is for a woman, right? We got to wake up and we got to change. We got to start to repent, right. all right? Do you understand what we're going over? We are, we are God's chosen people, right? We, we regular black people, right? We are God's chosen. We are the elite of the world, but right now we're in the ghettos. For what reason? For breaking God's commandments. You understand what we're going over? So you got to change. Y'all got to make that change. So not only should you, my sister, wear a dress, you wear pants, you wear pants. We got to uh, put something on our clothing. Give me uh, fringes. Give me fringes. Because you, cause you know. You know who we are. You got to represent every single day. You got to re uh, represent. All of us have to. Read. Numbers chapter 15 verse 38 Speak unto the children of Israel Speak to the so-called blacks and Hispanics And Native American Indians Read And bid them That they make them fringes That they make them what? Fringes In the borders of their garment So that's why we have these on Remember the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom A good understanding have all they that do his commandments this is another commandment regarding apparel. We all must have these, these fringes on, our, our clothing. Every single day, God requires that from us all. Because guess what? You're not regular people like you've been taught. That, that is a special thing. That is a righteous thing according to God, right? Throughout their generation. So not only you, you are to bid your children to do the exact same thing. The exact same thing. You have to wear fringes. Your house, your family has to wear fringes as well. You understand? Read on. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So every time you put those fringes on your clothing, you must add in addition to that a, a, a border of blue. Right? Whatever type of blue you like, sky blue, navy blue, whatever, you know, fits. Your, your current, you know, choice, you know, whatever you decide, right? But it must be blue and you must have those fringes on all of your clothing. It shouldn't be not one single day that you walk out the house without these right here. But what's the point of it? Let's get it, Ray. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So the, this Bible is extremely repetitive. What, what, what is the one subject God is always talking about? Love. Yeah, that's true. But it's a, it's a bit more detailed than just love. What is love according to the Bible? Huh? Let's go back to it. Let's go back to it. We're going to get love and we're going we gonna... to... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so we're, we're, right now we're getting, right, what the Lord constantly goes over with his, 
his, his uh, chosen people. The so-called blacks, the Hispanics, the Israelites, according to the Bible. Read. Read. First John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God. This is the love of God, right? That we keep his commandments. That we do what? Keep his commandments. Now let's get the will of God. Now let's get the will of God. We just got the love of God, which is what? Keep his commandments. How do you fear God? By keeping his commandments. Now let's get the will of God. Because a lot of people claim to have the will of God. Especially up in these churches. Let's see if that correlates with the Bible. Read. Psalms chapter 40 verse 8. Uh -huh. I delight to do thy will. Oh my God. Uh -huh. Yay. Thy law is within my heart. Thy, thy what is, is in my heart? Thy law is within my heart. So God's will, the will of the Lord, the will of the Father is to keep the laws. He's saying the same thing over and over and over. The love of God is keeping the commandments, keeping the law. The will of God is keeping the commandments, keeping the law. Having a fear for God is keeping the commandments, keeping the law. Right. We went into slavery for breaking God's commandments. You know. So in order for us to come back to God, the, the, that's easy math. What we got to do? Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Right. It's that simple, y'all. It is that simple. God is going to restore us fully as a people once our nation comes back to keeping the laws. It's always going to come back to that because sin is temporary. Give me that, in John. Give me that, in John eight. John eight, chapter thirty, um, chapter eight, verse thirty-two. All right. John eight, thirty-two. See what uh, the Bible says about the truth. Great. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Uh -huh. And ye shall know the truth. Talking about you again. You Israelites, one day you're going to know the truth. Because currently the majority of our people, they don't know. They don't know that they're the chosen people of God. Right? Read. And the truth shall make you free. It shall do what? Make you free. What does that mean? The truth is going to make you free. What does that mean? Remember the love of God. Remember the will of God. So what is truth according to the Bible? Let's get that one last precept for, for keeping the laws. That one last precept. Saying the same thing over and over and over. Precept upon precept is how we must read this Bible. All right? Go ahead, read. The book of Psalms. Chapter 119, verse 142. Huh? Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Thy law is what? The truth. Now go back to John 8, 32. Remember, thy law is the what? The truth. It's the truth. Read. John chapter 8, verse 32. Huh? And ye shall know the truth. And one day, y'all gonna know the truth. What's the truth again? The laws, the commandments. One day, you Israelites, you shall know the truth, which is the keeping of my commandments. Because right now, you're not doing it around the world. But one day, you're going to know the truth. You're going to know my version of the truth. Not your own opinions, because we all got that. God's version of the truth. Read. And the truth shall make you free. And that same truth is going to make you free. Why, why does it say that shall make you free? Uh, Baruch 3 and 8. Why does it say that? That truth is going to make you free. Basically saying, I guess, the truth is going to make us free because when we rise out, we in and we come back. Uh -huh. well, first of all, we're going to know the black. Opinion, right, they, right. And they all black. They're going to go to school and work with the black. It's in one hour, right? Yep. Okay. So we're going to know who he is. We're going to know the law of there you go right there. All praises to the Lord. Read. Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Uh -huh. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. Y'all hear that? We are yet this day in our slavery. We still slaves, if y'all know. Yep. God knows that. He been through that. We wake up every day. We go to work. We go, oh, that's my career. No, you're a slave. God says you are still in your captivity.
by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models.